Hey, y'all, real quick, before we dive into this episode, I think you're going to enjoy this one. It was with our friend Courtney Carver, and man, she is outstanding. But before we get into that, today is an exciting day for us. We never plan to create a physical good, you know, as the minimalists creating a physical good. It seemed a, a bit ironic at first, but after receiving more than a thousand messages about that discontinued travel bag in our documentary, uh, the Netflix documentary Minimalism, we decided to partner with the man who created the original bag, a guy named Malcolm Fontier. To, he's, an, he's an environmentalist and uh, he actually runs a company called Sea Hive that helps other companies use less plastic and uh, when they're manufacturing things and he had really similar values to us so we decided to help malcolm bring this bag back for a a limited run Uh, the new version of the bag is called the packed one it's made responsibly from sustainable materials and zero plastic packaging it ships with no plastic whatsoever and I'll tell you this, it is honestly the best bag that I have ever used. And that's why after seven years as the minimalists, it's our first and only physical good. It's the only physical good that bears our name. So if you're interested in learning more about the bag, you can see a video. Uh, we launched this Indiegogo campaign to try to figure out how many people are going to want to purchase or support this bag. You can go over to theminimalists.com slash bag. You can see the the links there. You can see a video about the bag, all the details. But I wanna be really clear about this. You probably don't need a new bag. And if you don't, please don't feel compelled to buy this one. Sure, it, it for me, it makes travel a little bit simpler. It's truly one of the best items that I've ever owned. It's added the most value to my life, but there's no physical good that's going to make your life happier or more complete. So please consider this bag only if you need a new bag and only if you can afford it. Otherwise, it's okay to let it go. It is just a bag. All right, y'all. We hope you enjoy this live episode of The Minimalists Podcast. Every little thing you think that you need Every little thing you think that you need Every little thing that's just feeding your greed Oh, I bet that you'd be fine without it Live from the Depot Theater in downtown Salt Lake City, my name is Joshua Fields Milburn. And I am Ryan Nicodemus, and together we are the Minimalists, live in Salt Lake! Ryan, I gotta tell you, our first tour stop was, in uh, our first uh, uh, tour, we came to Salt Lake as one of the 33 cities we went to. This was 2011. Our first book had just come out. It was called Minimalism, Live a Meaningful Life. Oh, I remember that so well. And if you uh, re- yeah, if you remember, six people showed up. It was Josh of. and I. <laughs> That's two. It was Courtney and her husband. Yes. And then it was two other folks. We had two people show up at our first Salt Lake <laughs> event. And so a few extra have shown up tonight. Thank you so much. I, we've come here almost every year uh, since then. And it has become one of my favorite cities. In fact, Ryan and I, yeah. we just moved to Los Angeles. And... Um, I have to tell you that the city that was number two on the list, was, we're sitting there right now. Uh, the deciding factor was one word, winter. I, I have been committed to winter for the last 36 years living in Ohio and Montana, and so I figured I'd have at least a bit of a break before you know, maybe, maybe settling down here someday. But I absolutely love this city. I love the people here. And we have a, a special guest with us tonight. Ryan, during his talk earlier, he was, he was talking about some of the people that inspired us early on. There was Colin and Leo and Joshua Becker and, and of course, tonight's guest, who is a local hometown hero and someone who inspired us. She's the, the founder of her websites called Be More With Less and also uh, Project 333. Please welcome to the stage, Courtney Carver. Yeah. 
Now, Courtney, you were just telling us backstage, you've been with us on multiple continents now, and I sort of just looked at you and blinked for a moment. I forgot, we were in Australia together a few years ago, and uh, you've been to quite a few uh, of our stops, so thank you for doing this tonight. Um, we'll, we'll get it out in the, the podcast ether uh, eventually, but you're working on something new right now, we're working on it with you, it's called A Simple Year. And um, it's something we've, we've worked on with you a little bit. It's, it's your project, and we just sort of tag along and uh, try to help a few people out for a month. But it's 12 months of, of guided simplicity. What, what, what encouraged you to, um, to go down that route? I mean, was it the people that needed help, and you couldn't help them via email anymore? <laughs> I still help via email occasionally. Uh, but I created a simple year because so many of the changes I made were one at a time. And I noticed that we were putting so much information out there on all the amazing changes you can make. And it was almost overwhelming, like where do we start? What do we do first? And I thought if we could break it down topic by topic, month by month with amazing contributors who really specialized in those topics, that it would give people some direction, inspiration, and accountability, and a little bit of fun along so, the way. So some of those topics are, and fun is the important part, because for me, like a lot of the stuff, if you just look at it on the surface, when, you, when I hear the word decluttering, I just sort of cringe. I have this full body wince. Like, if you're one of those people who really enjoys decluttering, I envy you. I know there are a few of you here, here tonight, um, but, but there are many of you who are, who are like me, where you're like, you like the end result. It's like, I, I, I write for a living, that, and uh, most writers don't like writing, they like having written. And, and, and so you like the end result of like getting the stuff out of the way. I was actually, we ran into someone at a coffee shop earlier today, we were at uh, Public Coffee. Um, I didn't get one woo for that. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, uh, we were there, and, and they, the, the lady was talking, like, after seeing your documentary, which Courtney's in, by the way, um, and uh, it, she, she said, you know, I didn't realize that by getting rid of all this stuff that I just wouldn't have to clean as much. <laughs> and so I, li I like that, but the fun part is, like, well, you don't realize that you can do something that is difficult or maybe seems insurmountable at first and actually enjoy the process. And so breaking it down to 12 different months where you have these 12 different topics, the one that Ryan and I work on is uh, gift giving during the holiday season because, um, which by the way is right around the corner and it's already too late. <laughs> For those of you who want to have it, if you have any questions about gifts tonight, which by the way, if you do have questions, there's a microphone right there, you can line up. We'll take the first six questions tonight. Um, if you have questions about gifts, um, hopefully it's for like next summer where it's for someone's birthday because now is the time to start talking about gift giving um, for, for next year. Not, the Christmas is already, it's, you already have to go do whatever you have to do at this point. <laughs> but um, uh, 12 months of guided simplicity. Uh, we have some details on our website about that. It's called it's just theminimalists.com slash simple year. Um, but... Courtney, what, what inspired you to move down this road of, of simplifying your life? Did you have an inciting incident for you? Um, or were you like Ryan? Were you just pissed off that your best friend was happy? <laughs> I didn't mean to simplify my life. It wasn't what I set out to do. But in 2006, after months of debilitating fatigue and vertigo, uh, tingling in my hands, some numbness in my face, and countless visits to the doctor, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. And it was like my big wake-up call. I had had all of those symptoms before, one at a time, and could easily explain them. Oh, I must have pinched a nerve. I'm, of course, I'm tired. I'm so stressed out. There was always a reason. And... Finally, I couldn't ignore those symptoms anymore and decided to figure out how to live well with MS. And I wasn't like, oh, I should just simplify my life and everything will be great. Uh, instead, my goal was to eliminate stress a little bit at a time. And as I did that, starting with diet, moving to clutter, debt, busyness, I noticed that the common thread in all of the changes I was making was simplicity. It feels like 
we accidentally get to this complex place in life. And, and it, it doesn't happen overnight where all of a sudden you flip the switch and your life is utterly complex. For me, I, I look back when I was 28 and I'm like, oh my God, I've got this huge mortgage I'm underwater in. I've got uh, two car payments. I've got this job that I'm stuck in that I don't hate, but I don't necess- it doesn't allow me time to do the things I want to do with my life. I felt like my health was failing me, or uh, honestly, I was failing my health. Um, and, and we get to this point of, of immense complex, complexity by adding sort of one brick on at a time till you've built this house of this museum of complexity. And, and in order to sort of tear that down, it, it's, uh, it's quite the journey. So where'd you start? I started with diet, the place where I knew it would be the most difficult to change, but also the place where I thought I could make the biggest difference. And while I'm not recommending this. Uh, For me, I decided to cut meat out of my diet and most animal products to really lower that inflammation on the inside. And it worked. Um, It worked. And once I felt like that was the new normal, I moved on to the next most stressful thing in my life, which was debt. Hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt, including our house. Woo! Yeah, it wasn't an overnight debt-free process. You didn't just have hundreds of thousands of dollars sitting in a random bank account you could pay stuff off with. Most of us don't. I certainly didn't. You mean you didn't just quit your job and start a blog like we did? I totally did that. (laughs) (laughs) No, I didn't. In fact, I worked and blogged and paid down debt all at the same time for quite a while. Yeah. And I was was just really inspired by by your story early on because I, I tell you, when I first stumbled across minimalism it was Colin Wright, who's a, a friend of ours, but he was this 24-year-old single guy who traveled the world, and I'm like, I really admire that, but man, I really like having a sofa. <laughs> and, um, and so, really, Courtney, I was just happy that you had a sofa. Uh, no, I, what I found is like, wow, okay, here's a different recipe. You, at the time, had a teenage daughter, who, by the way, Bailey, she just graduated college recently. Congratulations on that. Thank you. And uh, yeah, it's great. And, and so I realized, like, oh, there are normal people, not just robots like Colin, uh, who has a great podcast, by the way. It's called Let's Know Things. You should check it out. But um, uh, I realized that, like, wow, here's an actual normal person who, who, who made me feel like this is more not just attainable, but practical for me. And so thank you for that. You're welcome. And I should thank you, Ryan, because whenever you share my story... I've been 40 for the last seven years, which I love. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, we're going to film this eventually, and then we'll, uh, you'll be 40 forever. Love it. <laughs> well, uh, let's answer. You, you willing to stick around and answer some questions with us, especially if we have some, some wardrobe questions. I think tonight is the night for that. Howdy, what's your name? Where are you from? And what's your question? Hopefully in that order. I'm Kim. I'm from Salt Lake. And the pithy version of my question is, how do you know when you've gone too far? And the long version is that I'm kind of a ruthless declutterer. And it's been really easy, and I haven't had to do anything difficult yet. But I just wonder if one day I'll come home from work and feel like I've been robbed. And then, <laughs> and then realize that I did that to myself. Um, oh. so, so I'm hoping you have some advice on how to make gradual and lasting change, but not to relapse and also not to regret that I've chosen to live this way. Can, can I ask you a question? Um, what... What makes you think that... By the way, Ruthless Declutterer is a great blog name. <laughs> Pick that up real quick before someone's going to grab it. Um, um, he, what makes you worried that... Are there outside influences that are making you worried? Or, or are you worried because uh, you, you see some sort of sign on the horizon? Well, of course, yeah. Everyone says I'm a fanatic and thinks I'm crazy. Yeah. But... But the trouble with getting rid of things is then they're gone, and some things are irreplaceable. But it may be hard to figure out what is that now. Sure. Like, what's irreplaceable? Uh, the, the, I mean, I agree with you. There are some things that are irreplaceable, but what kind of things are you talking about? Like maybe, you didn't know this was going to be a conversation, did you? <laughs> no, no, I did. I listened to the podcast. Okay, cool. <laughs> Thank you. Um, like, maybe you have something um, that a friend gave you, and then something tragic happens to them, and now... That item is way more meaningful than you ever imagined it would be. Sure. And that's hard to, to know. Well, I will pass this over to them, but I'll just say that the things have, have uh, only the meaning that we give to them. 
things don't have intrinsic meaning. And, and I know that we'll often use these words, and I'll even catch myself saying it sometimes, like, oh, that really means something to me. Well, yeah, because it's because I said it means something to me. Or you'll hear me say, I, l- you know, I love these pants. But then you'll also hear me say, I love my partner. And it just doesn't add up. Like, we don't have the right vocabulary for it sometimes, right? And, and, and so I would just be careful with, with the vocabulary we use because if we say something has meaning, then all of a sudden we think it does. I saw this amazing New Yorker cartoon where there were these, like, two thieves, and they, like, had, you know, like, the cliche eye masks on, and they're both, like, carrying a TV in this, like, super empty room, except for this gentleman who is the homeowner, and he's, like, tied with his hot hands behind his back as they're leaving, and, like, the caption was, this is your chance to simplify. Don't screw it up. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> You know, <laughs> I think that's probably a little too extreme. <laughs> so let's start there. Um, is anything, like, do you feel like you're being too extreme right now? Not yet, no. It's just, it, I've gotten rid of enormous amounts of stuff, and it's just cool. very easy. It's how, too easy. How do you feel right now? Uh, I feel fine now, but I, ha- I haven't had to do anything difficult yet. Awesome. So uh, I, I guess the reason why I asked that question question is because if there are people out there who feel like they're at a point where they're like, I've gotten rid of too many things. Chances are they've probably gotten rid of too many things. <laughs> and, and there are these internal feelings and voices that go on that uh, we, we do have to listen to. There's no doubt about it. In fact, um, even with those heirlooms that you're talking, whether you know, a family member who is alive or not alive gave you something or anyone listening to this, uh, there might be something that, you know, someone is holding on to where they're like, oh, man, but, you know, this is like a quilt of, uh, this is actually a legitimate example. We had um, uh, pretty recently at one of our stops where uh, their mother had made all of th- uh, this quilt out of high school pictures. So it was like, you know, this, this, this girl and her friends and her prom dates and her car. And, like, for her, it was this very sentimental quilt it meant a lot but she kept it in her closet and, and like she was you know i don't know how old she was uh when we she it was after high school i'll just say that and um it got to a point where she was just keeping this in, in, in the closet because it was embarrassing for her to have it out she didn't want to have to explain every single story it was something that meant to her when she was in high school but now she you know she's a professional woman and like did not want to have this you know high school quilt hanging out and I, I, I asked her, I'm like, hey, um, what would you do if, if like, you know, you, you sat back down in your seat and then you got a text from your neighbor and it was like, man, I hate to tell you this, but like your, that, your house, like it, there was this fire in there and it was your quilt. It spontaneously combusted, <laughs> but it was the only thing that burned up. Like that was it. Like how would that make you feel? And she was like, man, that would really make me feel relieved. So I, I, I think those feelings and, and those voices that we have, or you know, those internal voices that we have, like we really do have to at least give it a little bit of attention and merit and say, like, is this actually hitting on something that is going to have this, this lasting damage on my life? And for her, that internal voice was like, no, let it go. But you know, there may be something there where um, I'm trying to think of this really awesome example where I'm like, I have this one thing in my house I can never let go, but I'm one of the minimalists, so of course I don't. <laughs> No, I, you know what, if I did, I would totally tell you. Um, or if you do, it's not yours. You just say it's Mariah's. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Mariah's got this bowling ball collection she just loves. <laughs> do you guys remember that the Homer Simpson like, bought Marge a bowling ball on The Simpsons and it said Homer on it? And he said, if you don't want to use it, I know someone who will. <laughs> Courtney, have you ever... That is, not, that is not our... That's not how we live, dude. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, Courtney, have you ever felt like you've gone too far? I haven't. And what's interesting is that not only don't I miss anything that I've gotten rid of, but I can't remember a lot of it. And when we moved from our house to an apartment less than half the size, I had probably five or six pretty sizable boxes of things I wasn't ready to let go of. And I just wrote on the boxes, uh, save, put in storage, decide later. 
I wrote decide later on the box <laughs> in case I forgot what I was supposed to do. And when we found the apartment that we really wanted, there was no storage space that came with the apartment. And I thought, well, if I buy extra storage space, like my blog's going to go down the tubes. <laughs> I can't do that. So instead... BeMoreWithStorage.com <laughs> Somebody get that right now. So I got rid of everything that was in those boxes. And if you were to offer me 10000 a 100000 a million dollars right now to tell you what was in those boxes, I couldn't. And that's only been four years, four and a half years. Wow. And I don't remember what was so important that I had to decide later that's on those great. boxes. Yeah. Thanks for your question. Thank you. Howdy. What's your name? Hi. Oh. Megan, I'm from Salt Lake also, and hey, kind of fangirl. My friends are making fun of me right now, so <laughs> sorry to be the weirdo in the front row, but yay! No, glad no, you're here. We appreciate you being here in the front row. Thank you so much. Oh, we love it. Could We're you so imagine excited. if no one was in the front row? That would be so awkward. <laughs> we did the 30 day challenge, the three of us, and we had a good time. So thank you for Who that. Who won? Who won? Brandy, middle. Well, Brandy's hardcore though. She's like the Kim uh, before at me. Right. She's she likes. This She's stuff. the one upper of the friends. That's how Josh. She's is just us. naturally <laughs> minimal, and I'm not. So, um, my question is: I hope not too nichey. I work from home, and I work in an industry I love and doing something I love. So I don't want to just ditch it, but it means FedEx boxes come to me frequently, almost daily sometimes, and I make a product. I'm sounds so nerdy, but a professional scrapbooker and writer. And yeah, woo, scrapbooking, yay. Um, so, you know, I'm actually telling my real stories with my family and my children, and I don't want to ditch it, but it's, I, it's really hard to keep on top of. It, it's coming in faster than I can cycle it out, and when my home is my office, I just feel like I'm sinking. And I found you through, of course, like so many of us, a documentary, and since then I've been very hyper aware of it. Before I had my bunny trails, which is so awful to admit, but you, I just, you don't see it when it's around you so much. Yeah. You're kind of, you have blinders on. You took those off for me, but then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, now I'm suffocating, right? Because I do see it and I can't stop it because I need it to make the monies, right? So I hope I'm, this relates the, for some people. The monies are important. The monies are good, the right? Monies the are monies important. are good. Yeah. Josh and I are not allergic to money. <laughs> and but the scrapbooks are good. So I like you, what I do. So, so you so. mean to tell me you love what you do. I do. But you still have to work every day. Well... I don't know if I call it, I mean, I make money for it, so I guess in the But what, you, but, but what you're describing, it sounds like work, like keeping track of it all and making oh, sure. Oh, that, that aspect, yes. The management absolutely. of it, yes, is yeah. work. The output yeah. and the end result, I don't feel like is work. It's right. like the writing, right? Yes. And I, too, am a writer. When I'm well, done writing, I love the piece, th and, but and, getting there is painful. And, and, and that's kind of what I'm getting at is, yeah. you know, it's, man, um, I, I certainly do have some, like, tips for you, but here's, okay. I just want to say one thing. Okay. Um, we, we we are raised, uh, in, in especially like in the Western world, with this whole saying of, if you find something that you love to do or that you really like to do, you'll never have to work a day in your life. It's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's someone uh, here in the audience or maybe listening to this whenever we come out with this podcast, and they're saying, no, 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 I wake up, I love what I do, and I don't work. Uh, a day in my life, I'm so jealous of that person. Like, <laughs> I, th I think it's probably possible, but probably not plausible for everyone in here in this room to have that, uh, that type of attitude. So I, I guess what, I'll, what I want to say to you is, is like embrace the work that has to come with that end result. Okay. Like drudge through that drudgery. The, the tips I want to give you is like better organization I do skills. lack that. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. well, that's why we're here to help. Josh? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so Ryan and I have different personalities. Um, Ryan has considered starting a blog called The Messy Minimalist. <laughs> I'm sure someone's snatched that up it's, now. It's the minimalistish.com. <laughs> <laughs> We're giving out so many URLs. Sean, I hope you're snatching these up right now. Um, no, I, uh, I don't really understand what you're struggling with exactly. Can, can um, you be more specific? To create a scrapbook page, you need paper and buttons and ribbon and you know, all these things. Now you're patronizing me. Oh, uh, no, no. I don't mean to. <laughs> no, I'm, but just, I'm kidding. They I'm require totally. products. And so yes. companies in this industry ship me products. And 
I make things. But why is that a problem? I get I get boxes from Amazon at my house occasionally. I, I don't. I, don't. I, I guess the volume. Okay. Because I, I do sometimes one thing per what do you do with all the, per day. What do you do with so. all the chocolate that they send Bex for free? Oh, yeah, yeah. My partner, Rebecca, runs a blog called Minimal Wellness. And chocolate, thank you. Um, she's the best. And, and she uh, will occasionally get, like, really great chocolate sent to the house. Like cases of great chocolates. Yeah. <laughs> There's a company called Taza that makes amazing chocolate, and they've not paid me anything because you can't pay me anything to sponsor uh, the podcast. But... Um, they sent like 14 pounds of chocolate to the house, and all of it was delicious that night. Josh gained 14 pounds that evening. <laughs> yeah, and um, I mean, here's the thing. I, uh, I'm, I understand. I don't live a zero-waste lifestyle. I admire people who do. Um, and uh, uh, I consume a lot less than I ever have so that when I do consume, it's intentional, and I certainly don't feel bad about the little waste that I produce. It sounds to me like you've radically reduced other areas of life, you know, whether it's with the 30-day minimalism game or elsewhere in your life, and that means you've radically reduced the amount of consumption you have. I don't think you necessarily have to feel bad about um, the, the, the waste, you produ- which, by the way, you're producing a lot of recyclable waste, which is, is, is also good. Yeah. Um, you're not dumping plastic into the ocean. That's right. a completely different thing. Um, There's not even an ocean really around here, man. <laughs> Great Salt Lake. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> ocean it remedy. tasted like the ocean. <laughs> um, no, and, and so, but here's the other thing. The, the, the question I'll, I'll challenge you with a little bit is, is there a way for you to acquire what you need to acquire and produce less waste. And I, I, you don't have to answer that question right now. You need to ask that question of yourself a lot over the next right. month. Right. Yeah, it, it really makes me think of like an artist who has all of these art supplies. Like I have talked to people in the past who were like, but man, like I totally, I have like, you know, 60 uh, grocery plastic bags I don't know what to do with. I'm going to make art with them one day. And I got all these vinyl records and these cassette tapes. And don't even get me started on the paints. I have, you know, a closet full of, you know, paint floor to ceiling. And, and, I, and you know, one day I'm, I'm going to make art out of this stuff. And at the end of the day, like, they're never going to use all that stuff. Right. So for, for, for you or an artist who is really trying to figure out you know, what do I hold on to? What do I let go of? Um, which, by the way, letting go, yes, you can recycle it. If you have a scrapbooking business, I bet you you have, like, friends and family and, and, and students who pay to do for, stuff. Right, Yeah, right. that you could, like, totally distribute this stuff yeah. towards, like, to find the better home. But, you know, for the stuff that you really look at and you're like, man, that's, really, that's a really cool stapler. And, like, I am going to use that star... That star-shaped stapler one day. Yes, right. No, I get it. I love me a star-shaped staple. Love it. My tape dispensers. I have like seven or eight because I like them. But at the end of the day, you've got to make a a rule for yourself. And I don't know what that is. I mean, for me, I use a uh, 90-day rule. It's, you know, like uh, uh, we just moved recently. Uh, Josh and I both um, moved out to L.A. Mariah and I, as we were moving into our place... um, it just doesn't have as much, like, you know, storage space for pots and pans and, and like, our, drunk, our junk drawer. Our drunk drawer. <laughs> what would Freud say? <laughs> that, by the way, that's where he keeps the liquor. You're right. But our junk drawer, let me tell you about that. Um, no, it is, it's, like, it's about half as big. And it's funny because, like, we put everything in there. I'm like, why is it so small all of a sudden? I'm like, oh, it's because it's smaller. Um, so I, you know, we had to go through that and I'm like, all right, like what have we not used in the last three months? And you know, there's like some, uh, you know, warranty in there from whatever product and Mariah's like, Hey Ryan, like we, you put this in the drunk drawer and you know, <laughs> he always does that. You, know <laughs> you put this in there, uh, you know, uh, six months ago when we were living in Montana, Um, do you think we're actually going to use this? Like, am I going to use that warranty in the next 90 days? I'm like, yeah, probably not. And so we will start filtering through stuff like that. So maybe 90 days, maybe that's not your, your limit, but figure out what that limit is. Like, what is your drunk drawer limit? (laughs) 
Let's not go there. And, and, and it, probably, it probably is 90 days, by the way. Courtney, you got anything to add to that? I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to put my drunk chore when I get home. <laughs> Thanks for your question. Thank you. All right, before we move on to the next one, uh, real quick, if you're listening to this at home, you have a comment or tip for anyone who asked a question today, you can give us a call, 406-219-7839. It's my uh, favorite part of the show uh, at the very end where people start leaving their own comments and tips because I learn a lot, many things that I steal and repurpose later. I recycle them for later use. Um, you can also send a voice memo right from your phone. Uh, podcast at the minimalists.com is the email address and uh, we'll post some of our favorite comments and tips at the end of every episode. There's usually a handful at the end of the episode. So stay tuned for that. Ryan, do you know what time it is? Oh man, let me check. Yes, it is time for our hashtag Ask the Minimalist lightning round where usually we answer questions from social media, but that would be weird if we were on our phones up here on stage. So we'll keep going with the line. Yeah, and so usually what we do is we try to wrap it up in a bow, a nice pithy 140 character answer. Although I've been told that's going to change to 280 characters. Oh my God, the, the possibility. We're going to be... <laughs> if, if brevity is the soul of wit, then we are half wits. <laughs> Um, but, but we try to give you a 140 character uh, answer um, that you can tweet by the way Jess is around here somewhere Jess handles our social media makes it look really beautiful she does an outstanding job and uh, she live tweets from these events yeah you can give her, give her a round of applause thank you She's taking photos tonight. She's also, she live tweets, so you can check that hashtag, less is now. You can post your own photos using that same hashtag, and uh, she'll repost and retweet and reshare and yik yak and whatever you kids are doing these days, she's on it. Uh, she's our resident millennial. And, um, <laughs> and um, uh, what was I was like, oh yeah, pithy answers. <laughs> <laughs> we give you less than 140 characters, but because we're on stage, it takes us a while, so we ramble on. So, Courtney, if you'll ramble on with us a bit, and then maybe we'll try to tie up each little answer with, a, with 140 characters and, and, and maybe even turn it into a competition if my answers are good enough. Howdy, what's your name? Hi, I'm Jessica. I'm hey. from Salt Lake City. Hey, Jessica. Um, so... Um you touched on a couple of points that relate to my question because for several years I have worked for a professional organizer who happens to be my mother. Okay. <laughs> um, and um, and it's it's just kind of crazy, like the the industry where like like you have no idea how happy she was when the Container Store came to Utah. Mm. And uh, and they even have like the campaign, like the Contained Home campaign, where they pair clients with professional organizers to organize their spaces, and they will literally spend thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars on, like, the designs, the systems, the containers, and Dude, labels, we are and in the labor. Wrong business. <laughs> 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 but, and the labor that all go into organizing their spaces. And, and I'm just used to those people who are looking for those, like, one-time solutions. Like, give me the container, give me the label, give me the shelf, here you go. Yeah, so, so yeah. my pithy answer for you, and then I'll expand on it. My pithy answer is organizing is well-planned hoarding. Yeah, um, <laughs> thanks. Uh, but here, here's, the, here's what I'll actually tell you. Most professional organizers are the ones who get it. Uh, they, they actually understand that. They, they, here's my second pithy answer. The easiest way to organize your stuff is to get rid of most of it. Um, and, I mean, what... Thanks, but once you realize that, you, but the problem was I didn't realize that, and so I had a basement full of stuff, and the container store was my friend. I had an ordinal system of boxes and bins and crates, and it was a maze of, I don't even know what the hell was in my basement, honestly. Dude, it was like 50-gallon rubber maids. Yeah. And a ping-pong table. There was a ping-pong table. You had to walk through... <laughs> the maze of, of the container store that was in my basement. I had like a container store satellite location. Um, and I just had, I mean, I had double XL shirts from when I weighed 80 pounds more than I weigh now. Every time I went to Josh's house, he was like, dude, you might like this tie. <laughs> you, we got the same shoe size. You might want to take these pairs of shoes. And he's like, okay. <laughs> yeah. um, and, and that's how I minimized. <laughs> Courtney? <laughs> I'm so going to win this one. If you need new stuff to store your stuff, too much stuff. <laughs> yeah. Ah! yeah! That was good. 
Um, I actually didn't finish my question yet, but I appreciate that. <laughs> God dang it. <laughs> that was just a bit of backstory. No, no, you're right. done. Next question. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, but so, again, like most people are looking for that like one-time solution. And then... And so I'm, I am kind of used to just, you know, doing the labor that goes into that. But lately, I do have people approaching me from a place of vulnerability saying, I need to let go of this stuff. It's too overwhelming and I'm, I'm drowning. Like, what can I do? And so I'm just wondering what you recommend for supporting those people, not as a hired professional, but more as a friend. Josh? <laughs> Well, I, I'm, I'm really going to let Ryan answer this because we, I have already felt like Courtney and I gave really good answers. Um, <laughs> but but um, uh, I, I, think, I think the best way to be a good friend is to be honest. Yeah, I, it's funny. Here's my pithy answer that I had going in my head. Um, sometimes some... Bring on the pithy. What's that? <laughs> bring on the pithy. I'll bring on the pithy. Here it is. Uh, sometimes a person doesn't realize they're not that thirsty until they're drowning. And what I'll say uh, to kind of accompany that. That was damn good. <laughs> <laughs> but r really, that's my way of saying is that sometimes there are friends and there are family members and there are clients who are really vying and really craving your support. And sometimes you got to give it to them. And it's okay to support someone uh, as long as it's not going outside of your values and beliefs. But if you have yeah. someone asking you for help and they realize, they're like, oh shit, I'm not thirsty, I am drowning, uh, then that is your opportunity to start doing very simple things like, hey, hey, let's play the 30 day minimalism game. I heard about this thing from the minimalists. Um, no, you could totally do a 30-day 30 minim 30 minimalism game. You could do one thing, uh, you know, a, a, a day for well, a month, whatever it may... Go we, ahead. We are, Sorry. we are currently on Facebook, actually started October 1st, doing the 30-day clutter clear out on, cool. on Facebook. Where people so you've already, you've people already helped these people start. Yeah, then why are you asking this question? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say the, the great thing is you're, you're just in such a tremendous place to help because they are asking you. And so often the question that I know I get and I'm sure you guys get is how do we convince someone else that this is the right way to do things? But there are How do I asking. force my husband to be a minimalist? <laughs> I don't have one of those, so. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so you're just, they're already asking you for help, so you can share your story, why you were inspired, and then encourage, and, and, and as soon as they kind of get a taste for the relief that comes from less. Yeah, because my, my question just kind of has to do with, I'm used to the, like, nine out of ten people who are, you know, asking for the, like, do this, do this, like, the basic bits in regards to organizing, but then it's like, how do I best provide the emotional support? So it's kind of yeah. what. Yeah, I, I, think, I think it has more to do with questions then. You know, I, during my talk, I, I talk about some of the questions I asked myself early on, but the first question was, how might my life be better with less? And helping them understand that, because what you're telling me is people, some people are overwhelmed. That one out of 10 is just overwhelmed, and, and because they're overwhelmed, it's, they're in that state of paralysis, right? And they feel like they can't start, because they don't have the leverage they need to start. And what you need to do to support them is help them find that leverage. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Howdy. Hi. What's your name? Tracy, my name's Tracy, and I'm from Salt Lake City, but really from California. And I saw you guys in California. Is everyone here from Salt Lake? Don't we have anyone no, from no, like no, 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 South no, Ogden or no, something? We, we don't travel far, no. <laughs> I know there's some people from Provo. No, you're from Provo. Okay, I'm, I'm from American <laughs> Fork, so I had to drive 30 minutes to get here. Joshua James lives in American Fork. Really? Yeah, he's a really talented musician. Anyone? No one? Yeah. yeah. By the way, best music in the country is in Utah. Yeah. But uh, I'm sorry, I've digressed. No, please. Yeah. Can I, I'm going to say three things. Number one, I love your message so much. Thank you. So much. It like, makes my heart so happy, and so I'm grateful. The second thing I want to say is, um, uh, I, I'm a minimalist at heart. I'm a, si I'm a simple person. I like plain Hershey bars. Everything's simple. I love simple. <laughs> and so a couple Christmases ago, I'm like, I didn't give any presents to my kids in California or any of my other kids. I have seven, by the way, 12 to 30. And I, um, I gave them 
the gift of... Most of the people in here have seven kids. That is true. <laughs> that is true. But they have not as many, has, had, have, has many husbands as I have had. So. <laughs> so. Okay. We got another one-upper. So we'll leave that one alone. So, so last year... At I the same the, time? No. One at a time. Too soon, dude. <laughs> one at a time, but kind of more than you would guess. So, wait, wait. So, so, la- so a couple Christmases ago, I gave the gift of my presents because I think, I think showing up is such a gift. And then this year, oh, I gave my kids, all of my kids and my family, a portrait where we all took pictures at the beach over the summer and they're all getting USB drives and one picture that I'm going to create for them. Um, so, but, so that was like, oh, I'm so, I'm, so one was gratitude, one was letting you know that you have so touched my life and I have implemented it even more than my heart has already implemented it on its own. The third thing I wanted to ask you was, what is the one thing that you like treasure? Is there one thing each of you really cares about that you would value more? That's a thing, not a person, because I'm all about love without condition. But is there something? Because I can take a picture of everything. I can remember everything. And I honestly, yeah. you I'm just, wondering. Like live in a cardboard box with pictures. No, uh, no, 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 not pictures, a USB. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'll tell upper, you, man, my... I'm telling you. Because I can go to the library and plug that in and look at the pictures. My ex-wife sent me a picture earlier this year of my John Stockton rookie card. Um, <laughs> by the way, greatest basketball player of all time. Um, you didn't get that in the divorce? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was taunting me. I still got this, you son of a bitch. No, we actually, we, we really care about each other she found it somewhere and the funny thing is like i used to really like love this thing it had so much meaning to me and the truth is like i really did. i was a huge utah jazz fanatic um and i didn't even remember that i had that damn thing 10 I years love later that. i love and, that and i it's similar to what courtney was talking about earlier and 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 so if i were to give you a, a pithy answer it um, it would have something to do with um, letting go as a muscle. So <clears throat> the more you flex it, the stronger. No, damn, yeah, no, it was no, going no, no, somewhere. No, 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 no. You flex your muscles a lot, man. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing down in that green room? Are you dude? intimidated right now? <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> uh, pass. Uh, the, the short answer to your question is just no. Like I don't. I have, love that. Oh I, my goodness! But, I love that. But you know, uh, I have. I it is a muscle that I have flexed. Um, but you know, over the last seven years, like I really have got to a point where. All right, here's my pithy answer. Uh, my treasures have nothing to do with who I am as a person. So uh, I, I would. I would say, like, continue to practice that. And, like, you will get to that point. Like, I didn't... Seven years ago, it was, it was about eight and a half years ago when I asked Josh that question, like, why the hell are you so happy? But uh, it, there wasn't a switch that was just flipped overnight. It's not like I'm like, oh, yeah, minimalism, perfect. Let's do that. And then we'll do the minimalists.com and talk about minimalism. I mean, for me, it was this... It was very common sense. It was very much like, oh, yeah, if I don't have all this debt, if I don't buy a new car every couple years, if I don't rack up all this credit card debt, like, maybe I won't have to work 80 hours a week and, like, sell my soul to this place. So it started out very, very small. But from implementing that over, I don't know how long it takes, but it... Seven years, I promise no, you, you'll get it. No, honey, I, have, I almost own nothing. I'm so simple. So what's the thing that you hold on to that you're like, love it, can never, can never ever live without it? Nothing. Oh, I love there that. There we go. Yeah, nice. Courtney, is there anything that you treasure so much 
that you could never ever let it go? I'm not going to say never ever, but I do have a thing. And I, at first I was going to say nothing as well. And then I thought how happy I am when I push the button on my coffee machine in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> so my coffee machine is one of those things that I really enjoy owning. You know what, I sh- now you say that, I would say my cell phone only because it has the pictures of the people I love and I can Facebook and see the people I adore from kindergarten and then I can call the people I love. That's so. really good. But it's a tool. It is a tool. It is a tool to the people I love. First off, for the love of God, go back up your photos. Because if you ever lose that cell phone, that's really going to be... I've done that before. I'm like, oh man, that was... Like when I was in the Holy corporate cow. world, my phone, like, I did not back up the Hawaii photos. And I was, I, you know, I was like, shit, I really wish, I mean, now I don't really regret it. But I've got 5,000 pictures of my phone right go now. Go back that shit I up. Do it. <laughs> I will do That's that. That's a rap song, right Ryan. <laughs> All right. Uh, I just um, want to add that my coffee maker is also a tool for the people I love. <laughs> <laughs> That's very fair. So I'm going to say one more thing. I'm going to leave. I got to move on, though. I No, no, go. But I'll say my, my motto in my whole family is, if you're grateful for what you have, you're the richest person in the world. I love that. Yes, that's Thank good. you. Thank you very much for the Appreciate question you being and compliments. Here. One sec, one sec. All right, so before we, we move on, it's time for our added value segment. Usually Ryan and I, we talk about something that has added value to our lives recently. Well, it's where we talk about all our sponsors. <laughs> have, you been, have you been having a hard night's sleep? <laughs> Have you been having a hard time shaving close to the skin? <laughs> hey, Ryan, let me tell you about the softest sheets you'll ever sleep on. <laughs> so the people laughing right now are the people who listen to other podcasts. Um, but uh, let's talk real quick about what's added value to our lives recently. In fact, by us not doing sponsors on the podcast allows us to very genuinely talk about things that we've enjoyed. But since we're here locally, let's talk about some things that I enjoy and that Ryan, I know, enjoys whenever... We, we come to this town. Whenever we're on tour, we go looking for great food and great coffee. So, Ryan, what's been adding value to your life in Salt Lake City, Utah? Have you seen the architecture around here in Salt Lake? It's the best in the country. God, I freaking love this city. Like, it's, it's the air. San, sand's inversion. The air is freaking awesome. I really do love it. <laughs> is that funny? Is that, is that funny? Okay, sorry. It's the second most that polluted back. city. Sean, edit that out. <clears throat> you know what I love about Salt Lake, guys? Not the air. <laughs> You're damn right, Josh. Uh, no, there are so many things I love about Salt Lake. I will tell you, like, the one thing I freaking love about this city is, uh, I'm not even a vegan, but there's this vegan restaurant called Sage's Cafe. <laughs> oh, I have, <laughs> I have to eat there every single time I'm here. Even though, like, I, again, like, I'm not vegan. I'm, I was for a year on a bet with Josh. I won. I gave him the dollar. He, no, you didn't, dude. He still owes me a dollar. You're not getting it. <laughs> no, Sage's Cafe, if you haven't checked it out, do yourself a favor. Like, do, go to Sage's. It's, it's unbelievable. They have a sister cafe or a brother cafe. I don't know what you call it. What's it called? Vertical Diner. Oh, yeah, Vertical. Yes. Vertical. All right, so... Uh, uh, Josh and I have been doing this like this ketogenic thing. So vertical isn't really ketogenic, meaning uh, it, it, they serve the most amazing diner food you've ever had. It's like biscuits and gravy, liter- literally uh, vegan style, which is unbelievable. But that would totally give me like ten extra pounds on my hips. So I haven't been there. But I- I- if you can afford to eat the greasy spoon stuff and you're vegan, like yeah, vertical is freaking unbelievable too. I, uh, one of my favorite coffee shops in the country is a place called Blue Copper, and it's not too far from here. And so I'm sure some of you also have other recommendations. Um, in fact, we were there the other day, and I ran into one of my favorite musicians. Just I don't know. I mean, I really love the music scene here, too. Um, uh, J. William Henderson is a really talented musician. I don't know if he's here tonight. He said he was going to show up. Yeah, it was but, yesterday, uh, and Josh was like, dude, if you bring a guitar, you will open for us. <laughs> Quite often we have, we have openers uh, play some music and surprise people, but uh, we couldn't get the person we wanted to get here. Uh, anyway, um, so yeah, if you, get, if, you get, if you enjoy coffee, I know some of you don't, and that's okay. <laughs> Stop judging me. I... <laughs> Never mind. 
<laughs> Never mind. <laughs> they have a great decaf too, is what I was going to say. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's move on to right here, right now. So we talk about what's going on in the lives of the minimalists. A uh, bunch of stuff going on. Uh, we just talked about a simple year. So we're doing the 12 months of guided simplicity with Courtney and a bunch of other simplicity experts. And uh, you can find that at theminimalists.com slash simple year. I think early registration ends November 14th. You got it. And it just started like a couple days ago. So uh, if you're interested in, and in, in, uh, here's, here's the thing though, I'll be the first to tell you, I don't think you need a course to simplify your life. I think you can simplify your life on your own. If you feel like you needed a little guided help, I think it, it's helped out a lot of people in the past. But it's not something you absolutely have to have. If you need some help, it's there for you. All right, y'all, quick interruption. If you want to listen to our bonus episode this week, as well as all of our past bonus episodes, head on over to theminimalists.com and click donate at the top of our website. Each week we publish the Minimalists private podcast exclusively for our Patreon supporters. This private podcast shows up in your normal podcast feed like Apple Podcasts, Overcast, Google Play, or whatever podcast app you use. And it shows up right next to our normal weekly podcast. You know, the one you're listening to right now. And being a Patreon supporter also gets you first access to the best tickets to all of our live events, as well as access to our monthly private live stream video, which is called Ask the Minimalists Anything. It's worth noting that none of this money goes to me or to Ryan. Instead, we're using your contributions to build a new podcast and film studio in Los Angeles so that we can create more meaningful audio and video creations. If you already support this podcast, thank you. I know that $2 often doesn't sound like a lot of money. I mean, it's less than a cup of coffee, but it is your support that keeps this podcast 100% advertisement free because advertisements suck. And if we can just get 2% of our audience to support this show, then we'll have enough funds to produce some amazing new creations. Your support is truly appreciated. All right, y'all, back to the regular show. Um, oh, by the way, what was her name? Damn it. Her name was not Damn It. <laughs> You're right. Um, yeah, I, I, think, I think that when we're... When we're in the moment, so, so for those of you who aren't listening to the private podcast that we just recorded, um, uh, when we're, we're sort of in the moment, everything feels overwhelming and everything can become an excuse to, to, um, to get into more debt or to not get, get out of debt. We were talking about debt. Um, I, I, think that, I think that we confuse self-care with just taking care of yourself. And, and, and I, those things, it almost sounds like a tautology, but, but when we, we take care of ourselves, generally it doesn't cost nearly as much as we think. In fact, too often we spend a lot of money to get us into an unhealthy situation. And so think about that. Debt is incredibly unhealthy because it causes stress, anxiety, discontent. And it keeps you tethered to a place where you may not want to be tethered. And uh, I want to thank a few people before we wrap up. Um, while we're on the road, we have someone who helps us with a whole lot of stuff. Podcast editing, podcast recording, tour manager, tour bus driver, and an all-around outstanding human being. Ladies and gentlemen, podcast Sean is hiding in the shadows in the back. I want to thank Courtney Carver for being here tonight. Thank you so much for being part of this. And how about this theater tonight? The Depot, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! Yeah. And if you leave here with just one message tonight, we hope it's this. Love people and use things because the opposite never works. Thanks for being here, y'all. Thanks so much, Salt Lake. Thank you so much. You guys are awesome. All right, before we listen to these comments from our listeners, I wanted to remind you all that Ryan and I are on the road right now. We have some tour stops coming up. We're going to finish up the year in Tennessee, Washington, D.C., Georgia, Florida, Michigan, and Wisconsin 
and most of those are selling out or are already sold out. And then in January, January 14th, we have a charity event to help out the Las Vegas Victims Fund. It's going to be the House of Blues in Las Vegas. It's not on our tour page yet, but you can sign up for our email and be the first to hear about that. Actually, our Patreon supporters will be the, the very first to hear about it. They'll get pre-sale access to all of that. And then next year... We're going to be in Australia and New Zealand. We've already announced four cities, and guess what? We might even do a four, uh, well, a few more cities for you. So check out lessisnow.com. That's our tour page, and you can sign up for our email list over there if I didn't mention any of your states or cities or countries, and you will be one of the first to know about any new tour stops. All right, enjoy these comments and tips from our listeners. Hi, this is Debbie from Canberra, Australia. I have a message for Lila from Edmonton who was talking about her um, two-year-old, or her one-year-old who's going to be a two-year-old next birthday. And I had a suggestion, if you want to encourage people to not give her things, but maybe experiences, you can be very specific about the kinds of things that would be great. So, for example, you could say, you know, we'd love to um, give her swimming lessons this year. And each swimming lesson works out to this much money. So if you'd like to give her a swimming lesson, um, you know, send us a a, a fish with some money. Um, and the but then the other suggestion is the follow up. So you know, throughout the year, send people a message with a photo of her at swimming lessons to let them know that that gift was used and it was appreciated and so they can actually see the result of giving someone an experience rather than a physical item. Hey, Josh and Ryan. It's, uh, Brad in New York here. I have suggestions for people trying to get rid of items. It doesn't necessarily have to be a physical object. Deleting superfluous apps from your phone can count too. Digital clutter is still clutter. Hey guys, my name is Justin, and I'm calling from Columbus, Ohio, and my uh, question has to do with prescription medication. So um, hopefully you guys are aware in your home home state of Ohio that the opioid uh, prescription crisis uh, is at an all-time high uh, when it comes to the abuse and misuse of prescription medication. And one of the things that's been developed through the Ohio State University is a program called Generation Rx. And one of the key takeaways uh, is educating the public about um, the proper use of prescription uh, medication, as well as the proper disposal. So when you, um, as I've been listening to your guys' podcast and, and learning about some of the principles that you guys, um, you know, are, are teaching on it, it can be applied to, to help uh, as a potential solution um, for this crisis and uh, by applying the um, simplifying and minimalizing your drug cabinet or your medicine cabinet uh, and going through and properly disposing of uh, prescription medications that aren't uh, being used because one out of four people that uh, misuse or abuse a prescription drug got them from a family member or friend. And a lot of times that's just uh, prescription drugs that are hanging out in the medicine cabinet um, Not you know, that can be uh, minimized when they're no longer needed. Every little thing you think that you need Every little thing you think that you need Every little thing that's just feeding your greed Oh, I bet that you'd be fine without it Every little thing that you gotta have Every little thing that you gotta have you gotta reach for and you gotta grab. Oh, I bet that you be fine without it. So tear your eyes away. Or tear your eyes. Hey. 